Well, hello, Shoreline Church. This, uh, this is your devotional for Wednesday, April 28th, and we're continuing to walk through the book of Proverbs. And so today we're in Proverbs chapter 17, and our theme here, and this is the theme that weaves through a lot of Proverbs, is our words, how our words have impact and they have power. Uh, as a matter of fact, there, there's so much, well, we'll, we'll probably weave in and out of that theme because it comes up a lot in the book of Proverbs. But I'm going to just jump through a series of different verses, and I'm going to read them and just give a little bit of a comment. Here's what I want to ask you to do. Open your heart for the Holy Spirit to speak to you about your words, about the things you say. So in verse 9 of Proverbs chapter 17, we read this. Whoever would foster love covers over an offense, but whoever repeats the matter separates close friends. Whoever repeats the matter. Gossip. Breaking a confidence. Somebody shares something with you and you just got to tell someone else. And it's not the appropriate thing. Don't do it. Your words have power, and you've got to learn to control them. Sometimes the best thing you do with your words is not speak them and to remain quiet. And then in verse 10, a rebuke impresses a discerning person more than a hundred lashes a fool. A rebuke impresses a discerning person. When someone rebukes you, when somebody uses their words to correct you, to challenge you, and they point out something that's legit. Now, I'm not talking about somebody's just mouthing off and it has no truth. But if somebody rebukes you because they love you and they dare to speak words that are helpful to you, hear it. Receive it. Don't let pride get in the way because you can grow because of the words of other people if they love you enough to speak the truth to you. And then in verse 14, starting a quarrel is like breaching a dam. So drop the matter before a dispute breaks out. Starting a quarrel is like breaching a dam. If you ever seen a picture of a dam that breaks and it just gets the, the, the chasm gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until it's just this flood water coming down, wreaking havoc downstream. That's starting a quarrel. Are you somebody who's really gifted at picking a fight? Can you quarrel with people over anything? Be careful. Uh, I, I make my living talking. I have to be careful with what I say because I can, I actually like debate. And, but, but if it, something becomes quarrelsome, it's dangerous. So be careful. If you're speaking the truth and you're doing it the right way, that's great. But don't start quarrels for the sake of starting quarrels. It's damaging. It's destructive. And then finally, verses 27 and 28. The one who has knowledge uses words with restraint. And whoever has understanding is even tempered. I love this verse 28. Even fools are thought wise if they keep silent. I love that. And discerning if they hold their tongue. Even a foolish person, if they'll just keep their mouth shut, can appear wise. Here's my encouragement to you. Beware of your words. Whether you speak them, whether you type them in an email, or kind of pound them out on your your, text message and shoot something out, whether it's a, a Twitter post or a Facebook post, your words have power. Be aware of that. Pray for grace in your words. Build people up with your words. And oh, be careful. Sometimes the best thing we can do is simply be silent. Will you join me in prayer? Hmm. Lord, there's a gift to words. We can bless, we can encourage, we can speak grace to other people. We can share the gospel. But Lord, there's so much danger to our words. When we gossip, when we break a confidence, we pray that we would learn to be people who use our words to speak truth, with grace, to bring blessing, to build people up. And Lord, when we need to, to speak words of rebuke and to hear words of rebuke spoken in love and learn from those as well. Lord, let the power of our words be used to build up and not to burn. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I want to encourage you to register for worship, whether it's indoors or outdoors. The key thing about registering is not so much that, I mean, if you're, if you're going to need a, a, a space saved, obviously, but it's really letting us know how many spaces to save. And even if you're going to be worshiping in an area where uh, there's a little bit more freedom and in and, and, and the seating, still register so we can make sure there's space for everyone. But if you don't register, come anyways. If you're online, we'll see you online. God bless you. And we'll see you Sunday for worship.